the it's, same behind you because our people are walking what? In the wrong direction. They're walking away from this truth. Our people want to hear anything but the Bible. Shalom, shalom. What's on, Christ bless. Uh, let's go ahead and uh, introduce yourself. My name is Kalila Rafaela. All right, all right. So, uh, Miss Kalila, uh, what was your uh, affiliation with um, the the Potter's House? I uh, attended the Potter's House for nine years. Um, during that nine years, I was a part of the media ministry in sales. Um, mm -hmm. Angel Food and Tori, the Texas Offender Reentry Program. Okay, so uh, could you, if you don't mind, uh, could you give us like a um, a quick kind of backlog? What is what's you know of a breakdown of each um, ministry? What's the word? Yes, ma'am. Okay, um, sales, of course, um, selling product uh, after church, um, selling product at uh, any event, um, Woman Now Loose, um, Mega Fest. Um, traveling with uh, the bishop or with First Lady Jakes, um, that's what, in sales. Uh, media ministry, uh, cameras, working behind the scenes, um, just uh, the, um, the church is live on Sunday mornings and live on Wednesday uh, Bible study, so you, you're just doing a lot of production. It's really production, um, preparing um, just to go live, um, making sure everything is in place, um, Bibles, striking mics, um, the control room upstairs, whatever they need, whatever the pastor's needs are, um, preparing guests to go out front to sing or perform or whatever. Um, Angel Food is a program that um, provides food, you pay for the food, and then we distribute it. And so, um, especially during the holidays, people buy extra um, boxes of food to distribute to um, people in need. Um, so I would help with that, volunteer with that. And then also the Texas Offender Reentry Program is a subsidiary up under the Potter's House. And it is a program for people just getting out of prison, out of jail. And we, it's a year program. And we just kind of give them guidance on uh, acclimating themselves back into a normal society. Hmm. Okay, so qu quick question about something you said. I mentioned you mentioned uh, about the angel food, right? Mm -hmm. um, so with the angel food, was there? Um, you said that everybody put money in, uh, and then that y'all distributed once everyone put their money in to buy the product, correct? No, you angel food is um, it's not the potter's house it is a total different entity mm -hmm. um outside of the potter's house okay. you actually purchase like um it's food that can pretty much last you about two weeks mm -hmm. um and they have different boxes and so okay. um you actually purchase that and you purchase it for your own own home however during the holidays we um if someone didn't pick up their box and sometimes people would just buy boxes and um, whatever was left, we would kind of break it down and um, we would give it to a ministry that went out on Saturdays and they would distribute it out to um, a needy family. Okay, so um, with that being said, so was there ever, because uh, it sounds like it was more of the, the body came together to do things for each other. Uh, my question would be, was there any point or a time where you witnessed uh, T.D. Jakes himself actually helping the body out uh, no. himself? No. So there was never him actually helping and feeding the people of the church. It was more like y'all coming together yourselves. Correct. Okay. Um, I've never even, um, even during the holidays when people would just buy, they would come, come back to the back. This is the angel food. And they would come back and they'd say, okay, I want to buy three boxes, but I don't personally want them. I just want them donated. Um, I've never known him nor any person in his family to even donate. 
mm. um, to wow. that ministry. All right, that's uh, that's crazy. Um, so another question: um, You were in the finance department with the media and so forth. Um, was this a position that it was this a paid position? Uh, no, in the church. This was all everything I did was voluntary. However, when you traveled or if you did a conference, they would give you a per diem per day, mm. and the per diem would be. Um, about 40 or 45 dollars and so when you would check in to volunteer um you would check in they would give you a t-shirt we all kind of coordinated our t-shirts and then um they would give you your per diem um we would bring i had to learn because i would spend my money on food because that's what they had given me given it to me for and then uh, one of the girls schooled me and she said no 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 you bring your food and you keep the 40 dollars you pocket that and i said oh okay so i had to learn the first uh two events that i i did so have you ever personally uh witnessed uh td giving counsel to to anyone about specific um questions or have you yourself receive any counsel when you're dealing with say your personal finances or any issues or problems that you were going through no um you will never talk personally with uh, bishop jakes um he pretty much talks to people that um are big donors mm -hmm. in the church um eminent pat smith can go in and talk to bishop jakes um the braxtons can come in and talk to bishop jakes um Deion Sanders can go in there, um, but uh, an ordinary parishioner, you're going to see whoever is on duty that day. You will mm -hmm. never, um, you will never see Bishop Jakes. You will never counsel with him. That's just something he he's not. He doesn't have the time. He has other people that mm -hmm. can handle that. But you personally, so no. the parishioners, right? Am I saying that right? Explain what are the parishioners like? Who who does that entail? The like specific parishioners uh, are people that attend the church. Um, they also have um, ministers and elders, um, the PMTs, the professional ministry technicians. They don't call them ushers, um, but those are considered parishioners. Mm, so the people that works and do the thing behind the scene for him. They don't even get counsel from the brother. They don't even get no kind of help or nothing. No, you have ministry leaders that you can counsel with, or there's other people that you can counsel with, but no. Mm -hmm. um, okay. Pretty much, um, you may, uh, someone on the direct staff, you may can counsel with them, but um, as far as uh, mm -hmm. Bishop Jakes, no. You will never know. Not um, unless you have donated a lot of money in that church. Other than that, um, there's somebody in the church that can help you. Mm. So it's safe to say he's bringing more in than he can feed. Exactly. Mm, okay. Interesting. All right. So let's uh, let's move on to the next question. Um, have you ever heard anything of um, someone having to pay to have him maybe appear in a church or shake hands or just to speak with him, having to actually pay or, you know, get red carpeted for that? Oh, yeah. Um, he's not going anywhere for free. Um, his um, fee, I don't know personally. I've heard it to be a uh, hundred. I heard it to be a hundred, about a hundred thousand dollars. They said he wants half prior to him going, and when he arrives, he wants the remaining. Hmm. Is that true? I have no idea. That's just what I've heard. But I can tell you, when he travels, he travels with on his uh, personal jet. So. Hmm. So he has a jet. Yes. Wow. Oh, okay. Yeah. He's he has he been had a plane so um and he's had a um what's the car that he has um a maserati the bentley oh, yeah bentley. he's oh, had a bentley yeah. for years uh he was also blessed or given uh, a bentley a brand new bentley uh several years ago a couple of years ago uh mm -hmm. pastor paula white and another pastor from africa blessed him with a a brand new bentley so basically, he had other uh, so-called spiritual leaders amongst, you know what I'm saying, the nation or whatever, come and give him this car um, and had it come out as if the Lord was blessing him, basically what it... Well, yeah, they, she came, Paula White had came to uh, speak and um, she, before she actually brought her one or two scriptures, mm -hmm. she... Um, 
said, you know, she had something for uh, a gift for Bishop Jakes that he has been a spiritual father to her and she wanted to bless him. And she blessed him uh, with a Bentley, a brand new Bentley. Okay. Wow. Uh, interesting. Okay. Um, we got a couple more questions. So, um, have you ever heard of uh, a minimum of tithing while you attended this, uh, the church? Was there a minimum of tithing or have you ever witnessed anyone get in trouble, kicked out or stood up? for not t uh, tithing a specific amount that was uh, set out for everyone? No, um, that I've never seen. However, it is, um, I really wouldn't say required, but they want you to tithe. Um, they're going to give you a tithing scripture every Sunday. Mm. Um, they do ask for extra offerings. Um, and so I, now that I'm in the truth and looking back uh at my old tax records hmm. um i gave a lot to that church um i would give them my last um and just you know the rest of the week i was you know riding on a wing in a prayer but wow. i i remember one year my tax um records from the church just from the potter's house alone was probably almost ten thousand uh, dollars. And have you ever, uh, while in the church, have you ever fell on hard times yourself? I did. Um, have you ever reached for help from to the church? No. Never reached out. Uh, why not? You don't know want me asking. Um, was it more for me? I was more embarrassed. Mm, okay. Mm -hmm. It was just a personal thing. I'm. I would never ask anybody for help. Okay. Um, do you feel as if you would have received help if you possibly asked? Maybe a little. Maybe. It may have paid maybe a light bill or something if I needed it. Okay, okay. Um, that's a good one right there. Um, you had said something earlier about you giving the thousands and thousands of dollars that you put into the church. Um, now coming to church, you say you've been in truth for how long now? Um, at the end of the month, it'll be three years. Three years, okay. Mm -hmm. So after being in the truth um, for three years, learning the scriptures, being taught properly, mm -hmm. how how does it make you feel knowing that You've been tithing this whole time, and you didn't really have to. Um, hurt. Uh, when I first started seeing videos and coming into the truth, I was at work, and I was literally crying. I was sitting at my desk and just patting my face because I couldn't believe everything i grew up in church hmm. that's all i know is church i grew up in church of god in christ in the kojic church and that's all i knew so to see it and to hear it and to really understand this word it was so hurtful um i felt used and abused really hmm. because they know I it's I, you can't tell me that they don't know mm -hmm. I mean during the when I first got in the truth and it was like at the end of August three years two and a half years ago and I, I once I got I start hearing videos and start watching and everything um, I still went to the Potter's house and I went for probably about a month and a half and the more I would hear um, the teachings, I would I would be in church and I'd just look around and I was just amazed. Like, I can't believe that I've been in this church and I can't believe that, you know, number one, that he's not telling us the real truth. Mm. And I just, my last Sunday there, I um I went to my ministry leader and because I was still volunteering and I went to my ministry leader in sales and I told Miss Tamara I said this is going to be my last Sunday here and she said why what happened who did something to you and I said nobody did anything to me D are you sure and I said yeah and she said well what's going on and I said you know what I said um, I am like really um, learning a lot of stuff in the Bible that I didn't know and another sister was there and she was kind of listening and she said don't you start getting in, in, this, in any, any occult I think you're going you're getting ready to uh, join this occult 
and there was a lady that I worked with and she her and her husband were both um, ministers at the Potter's house and um, I've always I wore I wore pants but I also had lots and lots of dresses um, and skirts I've just always worn them and so she noticed me always wearing dresses and she came up to me one day and she said um, something's odd about you and I said what are you talking about and she said you know what I haven't seen you in no pants and I said oh I said I'm not going to wear pants anymore what why and I began to tell her and she said um where's this church and I said well it's in Dallas and I said you want to see a video and she said yeah so um I sent her a couple of videos and she came back and she said that's an occult you need to get out of that mess I, you don't need to go back there you need to come back to the potter's house and um, I told her, no, I'm not coming back. And um, I would still try and talk to her, and she would always reject it, reject it. And one day she got really, really mad at me. And she came to my desk in front of, like, everybody. And she pointed her finger in my face, and she was like, you, all this stuff, it doesn't make sense. You are not a Israelite. All this old Jewish and Hebrew stuff, it don't make sense. And wow. I, I mean, she was loud. And everybody in the office turned around and looked at her, and I knew I was delivered because the old Stephanie would have snatched her so quick, but I didn't. And I, I just kind of looked at her and I, I said, "Miss Doris, go back to your desk." And that was it. And it, then I thought about all the times Bishop said, Bishop um, Nathaniel had said that. He would uh, be telling people on his job, and he got fired. And I said, "Okay, you need to shut up because you need this little job." So, I I don't I don't say anything else to her. Um, you know, I speak to her, but I don't say anything else to her about the truth. And she she'll look at me when I come in, and she'll look at my fringes, and she'll just kind of turn her head. Hmm. So, man, that's uh, <laughs> <laughs> leave me speechless. Um, uh, that's uh, that's interesting. Um. So with that being said, is there any other, um, I guess, any other time where you might have heard anything about Israelites or, uh, the, I guess you could say, the movement in general? Have you ever heard of it besides that moment? No. Um, uh, no. Bishop Jakes preached a inclusion mm. Jesus, an inclusion everybody's going to be in heaven. Mm. Um, he will never... Ever. That will never come out of his mouth. Uh, if we ever hear that come out of his mouth, we know that he has definitely changed and has read the Bible for himself because he preached a inclusive Jesus, inclusive heaven. Everybody's going to be there. Um, you have to remember that his there are a lot of influential people in the Potter's house. Um, he has a lot of big time lawyers in the mm. Potter's house, wow. um, and it's funny. Uh, because the these attorneys and dentists and doctors that attend the Potter's House, they sit up in the front. Hmm. And those that are there, that are volunteering, you know, we have to sit. There's a row for us to sit, or we have to find our seats. But um, hmm. the um, the message that uh, the little clip that where he was talking about um, the potato chip, whatever he was saying. Um, and he called up, he said, stand up, Dr. Harrison. Odd that he uh, had him stand up. Uh, Dr. Harrison is a very prominent dentist in Dallas. He has mint dentistry all over Dallas. Hmm. And uh, he brings in a lot of money for Bishop Jakes. A hmm. lot of money. He, this man, um, mint dentistry is everywhere in the DFW area. So he's bringing in some money. So when I saw that, I thought... He's secure in the bag. He will never. There's so much money coming into that church. Um, he would never say anything to um, disrupt that money mm. flow coming mm -hmm. in. So, in looking at it, you think, oh, he just had him stand up. He had him stand up for a reason. Specifically, him. Huh? Exactly. He had him stand up for a reason. Um, because he, he definitely want to secure the bag and even though, you know, that video is viral and people are seeing it, he definitely wanted to put it out there that, you know, you're welcome here. Color doesn't matter. You know, you're going to make it to heaven. Um, so that was just, when I saw it, I thought, 
I know exactly what you're doing. Um, he definitely wants to portray to the white petitioners, per, parishioners, excuse me, um, that are in that church that that bring money into that church that, you know, this is not what we believe. We don't believe in this black Jesus stuff. You know, we believe in an inclusion Jesus and, and you're going to make it. You're, you're just as much a Gentile as I am. That's what he said. So, um, very uh, interesting that he uh, had him stand up. So, it's funny you brought that out because it brought me actually to my next question. I was going to ask you, um, do you know how much it would cost in order to sit on the front row? No, but if you bring enough money in there, um, they're going to know who you are. Um, there's so much money in the Potter's House um, on Sundays and Wednesdays that there are um, cops, real policemen, that um, walk with the deacons to take the money to the back. Um, there's a cop in front, a cop in back. There are cops on the sides. Uh, that money is secure. You, if you even look like you're going to that bag or going, you know, trying to, you would get shot in that church. Wow. Um, you're not getting anywhere close, anywhere near. They will manhandle you if you even try and, and you know, get close to that money. So there's a lot of money going in there. So it seems like you got church. some pretty tight security from what oh, yeah. we heard today. You got really tight security. Oh, yeah. Okay. And uh, I'm not sure if I asked you, um, how did you hear about the truth? Um, I heard about the truth. I was actually um, doing a Bible study with this same sister that was pointing in my face and telling me I'm in a cult. Um, and uh, it was on uh, Revelations. And it's, a, um, it's called International Bible Fellowship. Well, I'm a researcher. And so before this class started, um, I started doing some research. And I came across a video. And I was like, what? I couldn't believe it. And it's so funny because about two years prior, I actually have a degree in um, biblical studies. And that's why I was so excited when she had told me about this class in Revelations because I love end time prophecy. And um, I came across this video and I was like, what in the world? Well, about two years prior, I would tell my mom, I said, mom, I said, it's something in the Bible that I'm not connecting. And she would say, I don't know what you're talking about. I said, it's something when I read the Bible, it's, it's I'm just something, I'm missing something. And she, my mom would say, I don't know what you're talking about. And I said, I, I can't explain it. And she was like, well, I don't know what you're talking about. So when I heard the truth the very first time, I knew it was the truth. I knew it. I just, it was just something that clicked. And I, I thought, oh my God, this is it. This is it. And the more I read and the more I, um, I would watch the videos, I would literally go to work and I put my headphones on and there would be times I would just sit there I wouldn't even work I would just sit there and watch and listen to the videos and I'd have my Bible there and I was I just couldn't believe it and um, so I went ahead and I went into this class and it's a whole year class and it, of course it's Edomites and um, we were in started in Revelations and by chapter 2 I thought I got to get out of here because these people don't know. These people do not know. And I went ahead and I finished the course, but um, it was uh, it was something how um, how they try and break down the scriptures. And um, it was just an eye-opening experience for me. And uh, that's how I got into the truth. Oh, preach the most off. Man, that was a uh, very uh, mouthful right there, man. <laughs> Definitely uh, a lot of information. Uh, yeah. Well... I mean, we went through uh, most of the questions we have. Uh, is there anything, before we wrap up, anything that majorly stood out that you think people should know that might be watching that are still in that church? Yeah. Um, if you're still in the Potter's house, um, you, you know right from wrong. Mm -hmm. And one thing that just would irritate me was... The, it was so many um, homosexuals and lesbians in the church and they're on staff and they're they they work in ministries and there's women in the church that wear men's clothes and that just always irritated me and you know it's wrong 
um, they will never ever um, they will never say anything about it um, and we all know why um, but I know there's an you see so much going on inside the church and no church is perfect absolutely no church is perfect but there are some things that if we read our Bible we know we know right from wrong we know when there's something crazy going on and it took me um, about a month and a half to stop going there um, I was still you know kind of just shocked like I've been in the church all this time and I had never heard the word and the Bible broken down like that and I just you know that you see so much stuff and you see right from wrong and again no church is perfect but there are some things that are just blatant and in your face and you know it's wrong and I would just say you know just leave it took me a month and a half to really just to kind of get it out my system but when I left I got to the parking lot I lifted my shoes up and I dusted the dust off my shoes I got in my car and I never turned back and um, I'm free I feel a thousand percent better um, just knowing the truth and knowing um, even when I was in um, Bible college I never saw myself in the Bible I always thought those were Edomites I didn't I didn't see myself in the Bible and that was one thing that I mean I'm so happy to know that my people you know these are my people you know the Bible is this is my people and so um, it's just I'm just so happy um, to be in the truth and again if you're still in the potter's house wake up wake up we see stuff and I mean even way prior to me coming into the truth it was so much stuff that I saw that I knew just from right right from wrong and just me growing up in the church and knowing the little bit of Bible that I thought I knew you know there are things that are going on that are just not godly and you don't want to leave you don't want to say anything but just just leave just leave you know it's not right just leave all praise the most high. Well, with that, we say shalom. Shalom. Most <laughs> high Christ bless. Shalom. This is Bishop Nathaniel of Israel United in Christ. Please subscribe to our YouTube channels. Stay up to date with our latest events, music, and classroom lessons. IUIC plans to continue visiting different countries where this gospel has not been preached before. IUIC needs your help in pushing this truth. So join us. Subscribe to our Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and podcasts, and stay up to date with us. For more information, please visit www.israelunite.org